Hello, how are you doing? I know for me and a lot of other people, January can be quite a glum month in that the festivities of the holidays are over. Now I have quite a big credit card bill. The weather outside here in London is often grey and rainy. And also I have these creeping larger questions to do with what do I want to do with my life this year? And what am I doing with my life that come along with making New Year's resolutions? And so I want to recommend 10 books that, first off, help me escape the doldrums of this month because they're such wonderfully absorbing reads that are so well written and a lot of fun, but that also help me contemplate these larger issues from a different angle. And I've personally found them so enriching um, for reading them in that way. And they've all been quite important books uh, for, for me. Uh, but also, um, these a lot of these books I haven't talked about on my channel before or not talked about all that much. Um, so I, I, I want to mention them to you and, and hopefully um, you'll be inspired to, to pick up some or, or all of these books. And I'd love to know your thoughts about any of these books if you have read them or if you have other books that you personally find really inspiring to read at this time of year. So first off, I want to recommend quite a short book uh, called Wind, Sand and Stars by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, uh, translated by William Rees. Uh, this was first published in 19. 39, and this is part a memoir, part a, a contemplation about the meaning of life in that it, it follows um, the, the author's story, um, who is probably most famous for, for writing the novella The Little Prince, um, this, this classic children's book. Um, but this memoir, I, I think I first came across it because there was a quote from this book used as an epigraph in another novel I read, which I can't remember which book it was. I wish I knew. I think it was either a book by Donna Tart or maybe by Sari Hustvet. I, I can't quite remember, but uh, that, that quote um, was so meaningful that I thought, I need to go and read this full book. And so I did, and I was completely absorbed by it. Uh, so it, it tells his story um, because he, for a lot of his life, um, was a commercial airline pilot um, flying in Europe and Africa and South America back in a time when uh, flying was very dangerous. And uh, and in this story, um, he does uh, encounter a horrific accident in that his plane crashes in the desert. And and so it's quite gripping and thrilling in his story of survival, but also it is so beautiful how he describes the the act of flying and being in the sky, um, but also out in this desert and um, being at one with nature, but also contemplating the meaning of life, why he, he flies when it is so dangerous, not because um, for, for the thrill of, uh, of the danger of it, but because he wants to engage with life um, in, uh, in a way that um, is really meaningful. And, and I found this book so striking in that oftentimes when I think about the work I do in my life, my full-time job, I mean, personally, I don't find it very fulfilling or satisfying or feel like I'm contributing much to the, this world. But the way he describes our, 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 the work of our life as like a little piece in building contributing to the larger humanity of, of the world, um, I found so meaningful and inspiring. And it really um, inspired me to continue and do more bookish things um, online because, you know, this is something I feel I do because mainly because I'm so passionate about it and I enjoy it so much. But also I, I feel like I'm really engaging um, with readers in the world and thus with like the larger humanity of the world and talking about the books that are so personally meaningful to me, but uh, hopefully become meaningful to other people as well. And that I find so gratifying in that I get recommendations from other readers and discuss books with other readers and so appreciate books that I've read and, and uh, from a very different angle. And uh, so yeah, this book really inspired me to continue on with my reading journey and with doing all 
of this bookish stuff online. But other than that, it is just such a wonderful reading experience that I'd highly recommend. Next is not one novel, but a trilogy of novels that are all very much a piece, which is The Country Girls Trilogy by Edna O'Brien. And uh, so I read this for the first time in the, the past year or two, um, even though the first book in this series was published in 1960 in Ireland, and it was quite radical for its time in its portrayal of the lives of young women who break out of the circumstances of their small town Irish communities um, to uh, live life the way that they want to live it. And uh, and they're quite different people, um, these, these two female friends, and they have very different journeys in life, but they always have this strong connection with each other. And we follow their lives um, from their childhood um, to adulthood um, over the course of this trilogy. And uh, and I just found this so wonderfully absorbing to read Endo O'Brien's descriptions of um, their lives, but also their emotions um, just took me so much into their worlds and out of my own um, that I, I completely lost myself in this, this story. And, uh, and also it's really interesting following their development over time and also what I know Brian does with this story over time because she wrote the second book in the 1960s, I think, after the success of the first book. But then the third book wasn't written until the 1980s when she returned to the, the lives of these characters. And uh, and it has quite a different tone to it, the, the third book. And she does something quite different with the narrative style of it. And personally, I didn't think the third book in this trilogy worked as well. But it's so interesting where their story goes and what she says in um in that book and following the trajectory of their lives over um this long period of of time and uh, so i i read this as a buddy read um with uh, another um booktuber sarah from hardcover hearts and it was just so wonderful discussing it with her as well and um, you know the the experience of reading um a book like this um is so wonderfully enriched by reading it with uh, another person and um so we had a great time talking about this and i i felt like i picked out on so many more details of this by sharing that experience um, with her that, but, but also this experience that a lot of people have of growing up somewhere where they don't feel quite comfortable and at home in. Um, so they have to go out and find their own home. And I found that very much um, in my own life and, and found this so inspiring um, in that way. Another quite short book, and I'm giving a mixture of recommendations of um, short books and some longer books because I know some people um, don't have that much time um, and so want a shorter reading experience and other people want to be thoroughly absorbed in a really long read. And uh, so this is quite a short book called Beast um, by Paul Kinsnorth, who I think is one of the most interesting writers in England uh, at, at the moment. And I feel like this is a book that does Deserves a lot more attention um, because it's it's the story of a man who walks out on his life um, to surrender all of um, his his comforts and his home and his family to go out into the unknown to try to forge something new and the question of why he's doing this is really at the center of of the book and is he moving to embrace life in a different way or is he trying to escape from life and that's a big question I think a lot of us have when we make these radical decisions in our lives to take big steps you know to make really big changes in our life um, which I know a lot of people do uh, at this time of year and uh, and it's quite a scary thing to do and how he follows the journey of this man who uh, encounters this kind of malevolent force um, which again, might be threatening, um, but also might um, inspire a radical transformation in his life. Um, it's so 
It's so interesting where he takes this story and his writing style is so poetic and powerful. I feel like it like cuts right to, you know, the heart of, of the meaning of what he's writing about. And I found it so strong in that way. But also, just personally, I, I find it so compelling um, stories about people who sort of walk out on their lives in this way. And what do they discover on the other side? I feel like reading about this in a novel is a way of kind of testing that without actually doing it in your own life. The Laura's by Sarah Taylor. And this is a novel I, I loved um, in that it's quite daring in its like narrative style in that it's narrated from the point of view of a 13 year old named Alex, um, who doesn't identify as male or female. And uh, so that's quite like challenging to, to write about in a technical perspective of not using pronouns, uh, but also challenging the reader not to have preconceptions uh, about this character, you know, based on on the their sex. And uh, and so I, I found it so interesting in that way, but also how other people, um, other characters in the, the novel, how they react to to Alex. Uh, but also this is a story of, of escape because um, Alex's mother uh, leaves home and um, a very difficult relationship to travel across the country and takes Alex with her um, on this journey. I'm um, visiting people from her past, from the mother's past, um, but, but also I'm um, encountering new people and also following Alex's journey of development, of interacting with people that Alex hasn't encountered before and um, trying to find uh, a way in life um, for themselves. So it's kind of a road trip novel and um, so it's a great journey in that way and it's filled with all the atmosphere of, of like traveling uh, across America but um, but also it's this great like inner journey both for, for Alex and Alex's mother that I found so profound. The Narrow Land by Christine Dwyer Hickey. And um, this is a novel uh, sort of primarily about the artists um, Edward and Josephine Hopper, um, who were uh, a married couple and um, who both had their own artistic careers, although Edward Hopper was very um, successful and um, probably most famous um, for um, his painting Nighthawks of creating these paintings of very like stark landscapes and figures that are that are very a small part of those landscapes. So I'm looking at that that question of uh, the individual as like a small part of the larger world, um, but also an essential part of it. And so it um, she writes about um, this these couple's life together and their very difficult relationship. Um, Josephine was quite a strong personality and um, that really comes across in this novel. So it describes their experiences living in Cape Cod, but also their encounters with a neighbor boy named Michael, um, who's an adolescent who's had a very difficult past and survived um, some very difficult things and starts interacting um, with this artistic couple and his experiences with them and what he learns from them, um, both positively and negatively. And uh, the, the writing of this book and the way of describing um, the artistic experience experience is so well rendered in this this novel but also the the descriptions of of the landscape and um these complicated figures that she's writing about uh, i just found so fascinating. A novel published a few years ago and which was very popular at the time but which I continue to still think about um, because of its themes of self-reinvention uh, is The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. The, the story of two sisters um, who are divided quite early on in their life and take very different paths in their life um, and this is based a lot on, on race and colorism and passing as white um, but it's also about about sexuality and gender and how she follows the stories of these two different sisters and the decisions they make in their lives, the paths um, that they follow um, is so wonderfully uh, absorbing.
clean and uh, so well detailed. And uh, the, the characterization in this is so rich. And I really felt um, these characters and felt like I knew them and understood them. And they felt so real to me um, that I, I loved reading this story. But also, yeah, all these larger issues to do with um, what can we determine in our lives um, to, to make our own way in the world? And what are we sort of fated um, to experience, you know, based on the circumstances that we're born into? Um, these are such larger, um, profound questions. And this novel explores it in such an interesting and lively way. Another novel uh, about two sisters who take very different paths in life is A Saint from Texas by Edmund White. And this is the story of twin sisters um, who couldn't be more different from each other in that one goes on to live a so-called saintly life and doing a lot of charitable work and tries to be, you know, a so-called good person. And the other uh, goes on to live a very indulgent life and moves to Europe and um, wants to marry an aristocrat and um, live the, the high life and uh, a, a life filled um, with sensual pleasure and, um, and following their two different stories and um, how they separate and come back together is so dramatic, but also Edmund White's writing is so um, wonderfully fun to, to read. Um, it's it's so engaging and uh, and almost like gossipy, but in a really intelligent way um, that it's just so compelling to read um, with so much uh, great detail um, about following um, their their lives and um, the experiences they, they have and the many different personalities that they meet along their, their journeys. Uh, that I just loved this story. A novel published last year, but which has continued to haunt me, is The House of Doors by Tan Tuan En. The, the story of uh, the, the writer Willie Somerset Mon at a period in the 1920s when he travels to Penang um, to meet a couple there, um, a, a man that he's known for a long time in his life and also um, his wife. And um, and mom's encounters with the wife and the stories they tell each other, the interactions they have and um, the inspiration that he finds to write one of his most famous stories based on her account. Um, um, but how this creates her life in such a rich and complex and interesting way that asks all these questions um, about the choices we make and the compromises we make in life in order to find happiness and peace and tranquility, uh, but also how we shape the stories of our lives, how we can manipulate that and how sometimes that gets at a larger truth about life. And sometimes um, that's a way of covering up things about our life that we find uncomfortable and don't want to talk about and that we want to refashion to um, show ourselves in a better light. And um, how this, this story follows that journey of, of all the characters in this story, I, I found so compelling. A great big, richly rewarding novel is My Heart Laid Bare by Joyce Carol Oates. Uh, this story is set, it's a historical novel set in the, the 19th century in America, following a family of con artists and tricksters um, who uh, primarily centering around a patriarch named um, Abraham Licht and um, who uh, is sort of a master of disguises and is able to trick um, people and, and groups um, out of money um, and following his different family members and their different paths in lives. And you know, what this says about um, how we can refashion ourselves into someone completely different um, in order to get what we self selfishly desire, um, but also to change ourselves to become to become more holy um, who we feel ourselves to be, um, even if that isn't uh, authentically presented. And this book is part of a gothic series um, that Joyce Carol Oates wrote that um, has so much sumptuous detail in it uh, that I found it really enticing and, and gripping to read all the way throughout, but also the way she presents these characters in such a nuanced and, uh, but, <laughs> but in a really fun way as well. It's an absolutely fantastic novel that I think deserves 
deserves to be better known. And finally, there's another novel about tricksters,、um, which is My Life as a Fake by Peter Carey, the great Australian writer. And though this is one of his lesser known books,、um, it's also one of my favorite things that he's written.、Um, it's the story of two poets who create a fictional poet and submit work. As that fictional poet, and it's told from the point of view of a young woman who works at a literary magazine, giving an account of、um, these tricksters、um, that、uh, that published a lot of work、um, through this this fictional persona, and、um, what this this story says、um, about how we present ourselves and how we interact with the world and what we produce in our lives, and、um, the the issue of of ego and. Ownership and attachment to particular works, and that we contribute to the world.、Um, it's so interesting how it explores all that. But I also personally found it such an entertaining story that、uh, I was really gripped by it. Throughout and and like all of Carrie's writing, it's it's just so、um, precisely and wonderfully written、um, that I think it's it's a really great book. And、uh, also, it has、um, this great inside cover of the the hardback that I have. And and I went to see Peter Carrie talk about it、um, way back in two thousand and. Three at the Royal Festival Hall in London. Don't know if you can see that it's so、um, faded in that, but、uh, but yeah, this is a really、um, treasured book of、um, his、um, that that I have. So those are some recommendations I want to make to you. I'd love to hear if you have read any of these books or if you're interested in reading any of them now. And、uh, also, if you have any recommendations you want to make for me of、uh, great January reads that you find wholly absorbing, but also really. Really inspiring thinking about these larger questions to do with life. But I, I hope you had a wonderful new year and、uh, a great reading month. Let's get through January together, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye bye.